name is J.P. Miller, and I am the author of Leaders Like Us series by Carson DeLusa of Rourke Educational Media. I love to write stories of little and unknown events in the African-American diaspora. And today we will talk about Leland Melvin, the astronaut. Um, you know, when I write uh, work for hire projects, there are some projects that the publisher introduces to me to write, and then there's some that I suggest. The story of uh, Leland Melvin was actually one that the publisher came to me with. And I was so excited after um, they gave it to me and I did a little initial uh, research on him. I was so excited to write about him because um, I love the determination that he had. So it was really a joy and a pleasure to get to know uh, Leland Melvin and his story and to provide that to young readers. Uh, yes, uh, the, 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 uh, the book is a biography of uh, uh, Leland Melvin. And the thing that I like about uh, Mr. Melvin is that he had a plan B uh, for his life. And he, he, he was an um, excellent student. He loved science. Uh, he was an excellent athlete, um, and he did very well, uh, got scholarships to University of Richmond, uh, and was actually drafted into the NFL. Once he got into the NFL, um, he had an injury that uh, eliminated him from playing professional sports again. So he, he just stepped back, and to use the pun, uh, he, he punted, and he decided that he wanted to, to be an astronaut. It was something that he had always um, enjoyed or loved anyway, uh, and the science of it all. But um, he just went from plan A in his life to plan B in his life, and it worked very well for him. You know, it's really interesting that, um, <laughs> you know, in my lifetime, I've probably watched, a, you know, several, a million, I say, just you know, but I've, I've watched several um, shuttles launch and I've watched them re-entry into Earth, but it's never been much more than seeing, you know, seeing on the news. And so researching and writing this story about uh, Leland Melvin really allowed me to get deeper into that. And so just some of the little fun facts that I learned is like, you know, I didn't know that uh, when they slept that astronauts have to basically strap themselves in in their sleeping bag and they also have to strap their head to a pillow. So that was kind of unique to me. And then another thing that uh, uh, Leland Melvin noticed or, or said was that um, his taste buds changed while he was in space. I thought that was pretty interesting. He said that he, you know, he liked um, spicy things. And so just seeing, learning these things, you never, those are things that I never even thought about, you know, when I took on this story, but it was, definitely takeaways for me. Um, I think some of the things that, uh, that didn't make the book uh, that I was really surprised about, again, was a lot about the, the flight itself. Um, you know, uh, uh, Melvin, <clears throat> Leela Melvin expressed that, uh, that they orbited the earth 374 times. In, uh, in the two week span that he was in space. And to me, that's just, you know, it's incredible. And it, uh, the, the aircraft itself flies at like 17,000 miles per hour. And so in, a, in an hour and a half, uh, you know, they've gone around the earth, you know, one time. And it just, you know, he talked about the number of uh, sunsets and sunrises, and he talked about the connectivity of the earth, uh, how, you know, we are one you know, as a people, and he could see that even better from being um, above the earth and looking down. There were no state lines, there were no country lines, everyone was one. And I just thought that was something that was incredible. Yeah, we, uh, uh, we pretty much covered um, a little bit about his childhood. Uh, Leland Melvin loved to experiment uh, as a child. And so <clears throat> he, he'd be in his living room on the floor uh, working on experiments all the time. <clears throat> and then uh, when he went to um, high school, I think I touched on that a little bit, is that he was in advanced courses uh, like calculus and, and trig and, and things that, that was going to lead him down a pathway of science. Um, but also he was the athlete. And so um, he, he participated in this high school uh, football team. And then he got a scholarship to University of 
Richmond and uh, played there. And then he decided that he was going to try out. Um, well, he was, yeah, he wanted to, I guess the dream of his was to always uh, make the NFL. You know, of course, that like most young people, we want to make the NBA, NFL or NBA or one of the professional sports leagues. And so um, he had that opportunity in 1986. He was drafted uh, for uh, to play with the Detroit Lions. And of course, he went to spring training and uh, that's where he first uh, got his injury. He had to go back and kind of heal a little bit. But later on, he re-injured himself. And, uh, and so that was what caused him, well, actually when he was healing, he went back and worked on his master's degree. And that was also in a science field. So he always kind of had a balance between the athletics and, um, and his science. And so uh, when the football uh, didn't work out because of the injury, um, he just, he went ahead and, um, and, and put in his application uh, with Nassau. Uh, to be an astronaut, and he was selected. You know, first and foremost, um, for me, and I, and, you know, I, I am a, um, I am an athlete, or I was an athlete in high school, and um, I think for me, the takeaway for this story of uh, Leland Melvin is that sometimes athletes get a bad rap in terms of academics, and and I think sometimes that athletes. Uh, will not perform up to their academic level because of the sports. And so here's a, a good example of a, of a person that balanced athletics and, 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 um, and academics and did very well for himself and, and made a name for himself in, um, in the space program. And uh, not only that, I think his legacy is that uh, you know, he, he's very involved in youth and science and uh, NASA. He was, uh, he, I think he became the director of uh, the, the uh, youth educational program with NASA uh, after he finished uh, his, um, you know, being an astronaut and actually flying. So I think that he had, his legacy is his love for science, his love for young people and to get them involved in science and the, and the uh, space program. Now I will read for you the title, Leland Melvin from the Leaders Like Us series. Five, four, three, two, one, lift off. Have you ever wanted to visit a new place? How would you get there? Leland Melvin wanted to go outer space. He joined the astronaut program at the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. He was a leader in space exploration. Now his dream was about to come true. He was on the space shuttle Atlantis waiting to launch. The shuttle crew fastened Leland's harness. The clock ticked as rockets roared. It was an important day for him. He would be making his first trip as an astronaut. A giant in the sky. The Atlanta Space Shuttle had three parts, an outer tank, two booster rockets, and the orbiter. The Atlantis weighed 4.5 million pounds, over 2 million kilograms, and carried 4 million pounds, over 1.8 million kilograms of fuel. Leland happily bumped fists with his crew members they would be living and working together in space for the next two weeks. Lift off. In no time, the shuttle was miles above Earth. Leland looked out the window into the dark sky. He had never seen anything so beautiful. Sports and science. Leland loved science as a kid. He enjoyed doing experiments at home. In high school, he took advantage of classes. Lisa, Leland also loved sports. He was a star player for his high school football team. Being a great athlete earned him a scholarship to the University of Richmond. Leland kept playing football and studying science in college. After he graduated, he wanted to play football professionally. He hoped he would be picked for the 1986 National Football League draft. The Detroit Lions asked him to join them. With that, Leland became an NFL player. Leland went to Michigan to train in the spring. 
One day he was running when he felt something snap in his leg. He fell to the ground in pain. He took a break from football because of his, this injury. Leland returned to Virginia. His leg healed. He began training again, but for a different team. He still wanted to play football, but he was hurt a second time and had to quit. Leland had a new plan. He would go back to college and become a scientist. He worked hard and became an expert in space. He began working for NASA. While there, he applied to be an astronaut and was accepted. To go to space, Leland needed to do a lot of training. He was ready for his new adventure. Part of his training was swimming in a pool in a spacesuit to feel what it was like in space. Leland was lured into a swimming pool. He started to train, but his suit was missing an important piece of equipment. His ears started to hurt and he could not hear. After he got out of the water, doctors discovered that he had an ear injury. They said that he could lose his hearing forever. Even worse, he could not, be, he could not go to space if his hearing did not come back. But Leland did not give up on his dream. Leland worked for NASA while waiting for his hearing to come back. He helped people learn about space. One day, a wonderful thing happened. A doctor checked Leland's ear and discovered that the injury had healed. The doctor gave Leland permission to continue training. Leland's dream could come true after all. An astronaut after all. Leland finished his training and became an astronaut. His first mission would be aboard the space shuttle Atlantis. It would take him to the International Space Station. There, he could help attach a new laboratory to the ISS. He would be working with astronauts from around the world. Flying through space. Spacecraft move very quickly when in orbit. The Atlantis could travel 17,000 miles per hour over 27,000 kilometers per hour. There was a lot to do on the mission. The Atlantis crew fixed the space station, did experiments and worked long days. They enjoyed their free time too. They even played catch on the, on the space shuttle. Leland became the only person to catch a football in the NFL and in space. Leland completed two space missions. He has spent over 565 hours in space. When he came back to Earth, he knew he wanted to help people learn about science. Leland became the leader of NASA's education design team. He helped improve the way that we teach people about space. He also helped run one of the U US, United States government's science education programs. Leland was a leader in science. People hadn't forgotten about his football career though. The Pro Football Hall of Fame honored him by putting his Detroit Lions football jersey in their museum. Educating the next generation of astronauts became Leland's new life purpose. He retired from NASA in 2014. He now travels the world telling his story about being a leader and encouraging young learners. His quote is, the key to life is to never stop exploring, whether it's exploring music, food, culture, everything is part of the journey and it starts with exploration. Also in the book is a timeline of uh, Leland's life. There's a glossary of the terms that were used, text, and de text dependent questions, and then also an extension activity for the young readers. This has been J.P. Miller, Leaders Like Us, Leland Melvin. Thank you.